Welcome back to this tutorial. Now let's get started with some basics of blockchain. So technically speaking, what is blockchain? So as the name suggests, blockchain is nothing but a group of blocks or a chain of blocks. Each block is going to contain some data. And in the context of blockchain, that data is a ledger or a transaction. So the notable point about blockchain is that it holds the ledger of transactions from the beginning of time. That is from the time the blockchain was first created. So let's say the time t equals to zero for this blockchain is the time when the first block was added into the blockchain system. And this block, which was added at time t equals to zero, is called the genesis block. Each block of the blockchain also is linked to the other block via linkages to the previous blocks. So in other words, each block of the blockchain has a reference to its previous block. So this is how each blocks of the blockchain are connected to each other. One of the major architectural aspects about the blockchain is that blocks are distributed across the P2P network. The P2P network is a network wherein each node of the network is connected to the every other node of the network. These are the nodes which also helps to store the blocks as well as to do some mining process on the blocks as per the criteria which is mentioned in the blockchain algorithm. This arrangement with which the blocks and the ledgers are distributed across the various nodes of the network is also called as distributed ledger technology or DLT. The DLT is now also abbreviated as the alternative name of blockchain in order to make, make it look more generic. So let's say these are the nodes of the network. Each block of the network will have the entire copy of the blockchain. So let's say for example, we have three blocks in the blockchain A, B, C and we have got five nodes in the network. Then each of the nodes will have all the three copies of the blockchain. So what happens when a new transaction is added into the system? That is what happens when a new block is also added into the system. In this case, what happens is whenever the initiator of the transaction, that is the node is which is going to add this particular tra transaction adds the block. It is first validated by that particular node. Once it is validated, it is added into the current copy of the blockchain and then it is broadcasted to all the nodes of the P2P network. So let's say for example, this node has validated block D and it has been added to its copy of blockchain. Now this block D will be broadcasted across all the nodes and all these nodes are responsible to validate the block. Once all the nodes receive the broadcasted block and they validate the block, they will be added to their copy of the blockchain. So one of the question which may come to your mind that what is the purpose of such P2P network arrangement in the blockchain? For that, let us go back to one of the design goals of blockchain. One of the design goal of blockchain was that to eliminate a need of trusted third party. Now blockchain has a new way of doing it by saying that this P2P network will help us to remove the central trusted third party requirement and establish a transaction without the need of the trusted third party. And we will also see it in the coming videos how the same happens. So this particular concept to establish a trust framework without the need of trusted third party is possible when most of the nodes in the network have the valid copy of the blockchain containing the valid transaction entries. And that is possible when the majority of the nodes in the network agree 
to a common copy of blockchain and that copy is a valid copy of the blockchain. So let's say for example, all the nodes in the network which are having the correct copy of blockchain with the correct transaction data are called the honest nodes and the one which are under the influence of the attacker and which are having the wrong copy of the blockchain are called the fraudulent nodes. So in this case, if the 51% of the nodes remain the honest nodes, then the blockchain algorithm says that it will be very difficult for the fraudulent nodes to catch up. And as we will see in the future videos that the proof of work concept makes it more difficult for the fraudulent nodes to catch up with the honest nodes if the number of blocks are very much high. So in the next video, we will see the structure of block and we will understand what are the fields behind the block of the blockchain. Thank you.